Hi guys, it's Hannah and today I'm going to be talking about really stupid rules in gymnastics. So gymnastics is a sport with like thousands of rules, there's so many different ones but some of them just really don't need to be in there and they're just pointless. I feel like the person that made up the rules just like ran out of ideas or wanted to have some fun with them so just put some stupid things in there. I don't even know what they were thinking but some of them are just absolutely ridiculous. Anyways, let's get started. So the first rule in gymnastics which I think is absolutely ridiculous, you are not allowed to wear any nail varnish. I think when you're doing competitions for like a performance and stuff, it'd be awesome to wear nail varnish that matches your leotard. You're just not allowed it, like you get deductions for wearing nail varnish. I understand that you're not allowed to wear jewellery because it might get caught on you or something, but nail varnish, it stays there, it doesn't move or anything. And it's not like if the judges see it, they're just going to be like blinded and won't be able to mark your routine. I've had a couple of occasions where I've forgotten to take off my nail varnish for a competition and I've had to be like rushing around trying to find someone who has nail varnish remover. It's just, we don't need that stress in a competition. Just let us wear nail varnish. It doesn't make sense. Okay, the second rule that I think is kind of pointless. I mean, I kind of understand this one, but I don't know. I don't think you should get a deduction. You have to present before and after one of your routines. Donut not presenting is, it's where you like put both arms up and salute the judges to show that you're ready to start and then you have to do it again at the end. I guess I understand that this shows the judges that you're going to begin and when you're finished but they would kind of know anyway, like for example if you're doing a floor routine they know when you're going to start because the music will start and then the music will end. I yeah, that it's kind of like etiquette but I don't think you should get marks taken off if you don't do it. You shouldn't lose points for, for forgetting, like I've got a really bad memory, it is like a sieve. It's not fair if you just forget to do it and then you like come last because you forgot to do present which isn't even in your routine. <laughs> so another rule that I find stupid is your hair is not allowed to touch the floor. I don't know if this is the same in artistic because I understand that you do. Some people have like headstands in the routine and obviously your hair has to touch the floor then. In tumbling, which I do, if your hair touches the track, you get points taken off, you get a deduction. Hair is so hard to control. I went to a competition once where I did my hair in a really, really tight gymnastics bun. It had loads of bobby pins in, it had hair nets, it had hair bands, scrunchies whatever you can think of which you're going to bun and I had to redo that bun after every time I tumbled after all the practice goes and the competition goes and it was just oh, it was so annoying <laughs> so instead of like focusing on what tumble I was doing next I was focusing on if my hair was going to stay in if hair just decides to like come out in the middle of the tumble they would get a deduction even though they didn't pull at it or anything they didn't even touch it it just comes out and they get less points. That just doesn't seem fair to me. So the next rule, which is kind of like silly, is you are basically not allowed to wear underwear in gymnastics competitions. You are allowed to wear it, but if it shows, you get a deduction, don't you? Of course you do. What don't you get a deduction for? So if your bra strap is slightly sticking out from your leotard, even if it's the same colour, you get points taken off. And it's just like, there's nothing even to do with gymnastics and you still can get points taken off. And you can't even try and like, hide your underwear because you're not allowed to wear any shorts. Which is annoying as well because shorts are like, they're fitted. It's not like they're big baggy things that are going to go around everywhere. They're fitted like a leotard. They're not going to move. They don't distract the judges. You practice in shorts so you're used to wearing shorts and then you have to suddenly take them off for competition. I mean, I don't really care anymore, but I used to really care. Next rule that is pretty irritating is when you do tumbling competitions and you end your tumble in a somersault, which is most of the time, you have to land on a crash mat. It's good that it like kind of cushions your landing, but the thing is, if you don't land on the crash mat, you get so many marks taken off, it's actually ridiculous. I've done so many competitions where I land on the crash mat before the last skill, so I have to take off doing a somersault from a crash mat, which doesn't always end well. It's so annoying because you have to spend like all your practice goes measuring out your tumbles to get the distance right so that you don't 
land in the wrong place. Like, it'd be so much easier if they just took out the crash mat and you could just make your tumble as long or short as you liked and you wouldn't have to worry about the landing. The next rule is that you are not allowed to touch your leotard whatsoever. If you get a wedgie in one of your routines, then you cannot pick your wedgie. You have to just leave it there for the whole entire routine, which is so embarrassing. I've had it before. I was doing a tumble and I got the worst wedgie literally ever. It was just awful. I got so embarrassed. So I was doing like a half turn jump and I just yanked it down. And I, I don't even know how many points I got taken off. I didn't place, so I probably came last or something. But I just know. I, d I didn't want that, no. No, you're not allowed to touch your leotard because then you have to go around doing your whole routine knowing that your butt is basically showing to the whole audience and to all the other competitors and it's just it's just awful and it makes you do skills differently because you're like oh god i don't want it to get any worse so. the next rule that i thought of is basically if you are doing the vault you get two goes at doing your vault but on any other event you only get one turn you get one chance and I understand they can't do every floor routine twice because it would be so long the competition would go, go on till Christmas. Things like in tumbling competitions, a tumble is over in like the same amount of time as a vault, like ish. It's maybe slightly longer but it's over in a flash. So I think we should get at least two goes because you're so nervous and if it goes wrong and you just know you've messed up and it, it's just such a horrible feeling when you know in training you can do a lot better and you've done a lot better. You go to a competition and you just mess up. Oscar, do you mind? So I think if you're allowed two goes in the vault, you should get it in like other events as well. The next rule, which I find really unfair, I don't know if this happens in artistic because I don't compete artistic, but in tumbling, if you fall over in your tumble, you get zero. If you're doing your whole tumble and it all went like perfectly and then you went to do some sort at the end and just like fell onto your bum, you get a zero. To think that like if you've done skills before falling over, they should get marked, you know, because you've still done them. It's just, it's so unfair that if you fall over it just ruins everything. The thing which is very similar to this, if you take an extra step or extra jump in the tumble which isn't in the written tumble, you get zero. The lower grades, they have like cartwheel sachet, um, cartwheel around, whatever. They have little things like that, very tiny, like lots of different skills. And if you take an extra tiny little step or jump or whatever, you get zero. The last rule that I could think of is when people are competing on the floor, they have like the marked out square that you have to stay in. If you step out the square or land out the square, you get a deduction. <laughs> so bad to come out of the square, why did they put that extra bit of floor on? You know, they could have just stopped at the square or put crash mats. I don't really know, but it, I, it seems just seems a bit weird that you're just, you have to stay in a certain space, even though there's more floor. Someone's like really tall and they have really long flicks and stuff. It's just, they're obviously gonna need a longer length. So just, I don't get it. Like. In tumbling, you're allowed as much run up and as much of the tumble track as you need. That's all the silly and stupid rules I could think of in gymnastics. If you can think of any more, comment them down below. This week's subscribe of the week goes to... If you want a chance of getting subscribe of the week in next week's video, all you have to do is comment down below which one of these rules that I said annoys you the most. Just like click my neck. Aches for like no reason whatsoever. Great. So I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. I cannot believe summer is nearly over. It's actually crazy. As always, just comment down below any video ideas you would like me to do because I really love taking your guys' suggestions. Guys? I don't think that's a word. Your guys. You guys. It sounded right in the sentence, but I don't think that's a word at all. I love doing your your suggestions. There we go. I'll be pinning the nicest comment on this video and I will see you next week. Bye!